Okay, tonight I'm doing a, um, I don't know why I chose to do this, but I was told to, by God, to do a wife, um, wife talk. Um, so, and I looked up the different, um, scriptures on wife, and there's quite a few, obviously. Um, but I'm going to go through them and talk about, um, what God views as, as being a godly marriage. Um, godly marriage between him is one one wife, one husband. In other words, male and female. It is not any other version of it. Um, you do not um, have sex before marriage. That is a no-no. And what they did in the old days when they married is they had a big feast. And it was like several days worth of just partying and whatever. And there were no rings involved either. Um, so... <coughs> um, and the ring kind of means infinity, because um, it's basically when you have a ring, have a ring, it's infinite because it keeps going around that same thing. There's another one where it kind of does the figure eight, and I've seen that symbol. Um, and uh, so yes, those are symbols we don't use. <clears throat> um, and what I find very interesting is the first scripture that I ran into is but all, and this is uh, to marry, to have dominion over. <clears throat> be husband, married, wife, possession, and to rule over. Uh, but all is another word for Satan or Lucifer uh, or the devil. <clears throat> and um, so, yes, when you were married to Baal, you were, um, you were controlled by him and he ruled over your life. Um, that's when you have to cast them out and, and go on with your life. <clears throat> Jeremiah, um, own and possess is, is another way of, um, so Jeremiah 3.14, turn, uh, uh, backsliding children, for I am married unto you, and I will uh, bring you to Zion. So this is, um, talking to us, and he wants us to turn from our back backsliding, because <clears throat> if you've, uh, if you know of the wedding supper, um, God talks about the wedding supper and how um, he's going to have a wedding supper for all of his children. Um, and I have seen the wedding table. Um, and it's just basically, it's a, I mean, I've seen versions of it where it's from the top down. But basically, it's just really long. And I've never, obviously, never seen the end of it. But it's this really long table with a whole lot of, um, and I've seen different versions of it. I only saw, like, silverware and stuff on the table. <clears throat> and then I saw it decked out. And then the last version actually saw <clears throat> what um some i think it was my wife my have uh eternal wife who was sitting next to me um <clears throat> but yeah so we um will have a wedding supper for god and we will be married to him um and this is basically like his he's marrying us and basically solidifying his commitment and uh relationship to us um so he's asking in Jeremiah, <clears throat> just to give you a little background, <clears throat> the people had backslidden during Jeremiah. Jeremiah kept warning him and warning him and warning him for many, many years, and they <clears throat> they never listened to him. So he basically gave them over to Babylon, and uh, Babylon um, was, it's, I don't think it was Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was Daniel. <clears throat> but was it Cyrus? I can't remember who, who took him over, but Babylon came in, um, <clears throat> took him over, um, and then they were under the rule of Babylon. And um, they they didn't realize that they were, um, they were like, oh, well, we're fine and nothing's going to happen to us. Um, and that's what we're thinking now. It's like, okay, well, God is warning us right now to come back to him. It says, turn, O oh, backsliding children, for I am married unto you, and I will bring you to Zion. Because he wants us to, Zion is, I think, in the Bible, it's been referred to as, as God's heavenly hill. Um, <clears throat> and so um, so he wants us to go to him. <clears throat> and I have seen myself on a mountain with God many, many, many times, um, especially throughout these last couple of months. <clears throat> So Jeremiah thirty one thirty two not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them uh, by the hand to bring uh, them out of the land of Egypt, uh, which my covenant they they break. So that's um, in relation to um, 
<clears throat> most people turn away from God. And what I find interesting is if you look at the Old Testament and New Testament, it's a ongoing process. I mean, you have a person show up who's righteous and holy, and they bring um, people back to God. And then he dies, and then uh, they go go back to sinning. And this, this process repeats where another person comes, and then um, they all go back to God, um, and then he dies. I mean, it's this ongoing process. Um, and so there are a lot of prophets right now warning that <clears throat> the end is here. Um, there are many things in place right now. Um, there are, um, I've seen palm scanners right now <clears throat> being set up. Uh, we see things going under lock and key. Um, and they're basically causing things to happen in order for them to lock stuff down. <clears throat> Malachi 2.11, uh, marrying a strange god. Um, um, well, this is in reference to marrying a strange god. And he's referring to Judah. <clears throat> and um, people have, and you notice how Baal, it's to have dominion over. So basically, um, this is used um, because we marry ourselves to um, to strange gods. And when we allow sin and other things to come into our life, <clears throat> they basically will take over and um, they say that um, they have dominion over us because th we allowed them into our lives. So that, um, so that's... Um, <clears throat> So yeah, that's really bad. Isaiah 54, 5, For thy maker <clears throat> is thine husband. So that's in reference to that up there. Deuteronomy 21, 11, <clears throat> Taking what, a wife from people. Um, Deuteronomy 21, uh, oh. <clears throat> so basically, I, I wanted to put this because um, it shows that um, God wants um, people to be married to one wife from his people. Um, and it says in the Bible to not be unequally yoked. And that means basically do not have, <clears throat> you need someone who has similar beliefs that you do. Uh, and we should all, um, it's, it's not about religion, it's about relationship with God. But we have to have a wife that is from, from the people of God. And if you're marrying someone and they have nothing to do with God, and yeah, they're going to lead you astray and take you way down. <clears throat> Deuteronomy twenty one fifteen. I was looking up verses to see if there were places where it mentioned two wives, and this one did. Um, there are various people in, throughout the Bible. Jacob uh, was one of them. David was another. Um, so Jacob, David, um, Moses, no, Abraham. <clears throat> but there were a few people that had um, multiple wives. Deuteronomy twenty twenty four one. When a man taken a wife and married her, and found something unclean in her. Oh, so this is in reference. Um, <clears throat> so um, the reason. So um, if the husband found anything unclean, uh, then they can write a certificate of divorcement and give it to her and send her um, out of his house. Um, <clears throat> so um, so he can, he can get so uncleanliness. Leviticus 5.2 talks about this, uh, also Leviticus 7 and also 11. Basically, um, <clears throat> if they're defiled, um, if they touch anything unclean, um, <clears throat> if they do anything like wrong against uh, godly principles, um, they, they could get divorced. Um, like if you find your wife cheating or mistress or whatever, um, <clears throat> it's, it's not a good thing. And they have to turn from it because it's actually... <clears throat> you're actually agreeing with it if if you know about it and keep on going um you have to call her out and um turn away from her for a little while um if um if she's doing this um cuz then you'll wind up sinning as well <clears throat> so um so another hebrew word is isa uh which means woman wife and female so these are in relation to, uh to uh that so Genesis eleven twenty nine and Ab uh, Abram and Nahor took them wives uh, Sarah and Milcah. So, so we know that Sarai, and it wasn't Sarah uh, Sarah until God came with the the news of of the baby uh, coming to Sarah, and uh, he changed Ab Abram to Abraham. Um, Genesis twelve eight um, was about Sarai, his wife. Uh, some. 128.3, thy wife shall be a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Um, 
Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Um, so when you find a good wife, you find a good thing. Genesis 4.19, Lamech um, had two wives, Ada and Zilpah. Um, Genesis 30.26, uh, so these are the women or men that had multiple wives. Jacob had Rachel and Leah. Um, then you have Ruth uh, 3.11, um, about um, an honest woman, um, um, which isn't... Um, so yeah, so an honest woman is, is what Ruth was, and she was looking for a husband or... Uh, quarrelsome women was mentioned in Proverbs twenty seven fifteen, and basically you don't want that. <clears throat> and in Hosea one two, talks about a harlot, um, a Greek um, Greek wife uh, word is gamio, and it's to wed, marry a wife, lend in marriage, um, and a lot of the Greek words um, came out in the New Testament. They didn't come out in the Old Testament. Uh, Luke seventeen twenty seven uh twenty seven married, drank and ate until Noah entered the ark. So this is in reference to what happened during uh Noah's time. Um, so this is also in uh, reference to the end of days, uh, because the people married and drank and ate until um, until really bad things happened, and that's what we're living in today. Is people are pretending like nothing's happening and going on along in life. Um, and God's about to shut the door and go, okay, it's done. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7.28, marriage is not a sin. Um, Matthew 5.22, divorce a wife because of fornication. Causes uh, her to commit fornication, which equals adul adultery. Uh, Mark, 11, Mark 10, 11 also talks on this. And Matthew 19.9 looks like... Um, and also Luke sixteen night uh sixteen eighteen sorry talks about divorce. First Corinthians seven nine, but if they uh cannot contain themselves, um then they need to be married. Basically if you can't control yourselves and need to release um in sexual ways, then it's better for you to get married than to um not marry. You're not supposed to have sex out of marriage. First Corinthians seven thirty nine bound by law to husband, but released if the husband dies. So, First uh, Corinthians seven thirty nine talks about um, the law of the husband. First uh, Timothy five fourteen, Mary have and this is basically what you're supposed to do. Mary have kids, guide a uh, house, um, give no chance for adversary uh, to come in and do anything. Um, Romans seven two woman is bound till husband dies. Ephesians five twenty eight men uh, loves wives um, as their own bodies. So basically, um, you're supposed to love your wife like you do your own body. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so Proverbs uh, twelve four an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but he is uh, he. Who, who shames him is like rottenness to his bones. Uh, Proverbs nineteen fourteen. A prudent wife is from the Lord. Um, Proverbs thirty one. You've probably heard of Proverbs thirty one ministry, um, but these are the traits of an excellent wife, and you'll have to look at them. Um, but it's quite long. Uh, but it's the Proverbs thirty thirty one, and I would advise you to go look at it. Uh, Proverbs eighteen twenty two. He who finds um, a wife finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. Uh, you you definitely want favor from from the Lord, because things go right with you uh, when you follow God. Um, enemies are no more. Um, God gets rid of every uh, obstacle in your path. Uh, Ephesians five twenty two. Wives be subject to your husband as to the Lord. Um, Colossians three eighteen um, says the same thing. Uh, First Peter, uh, three eleven, talks about having uh wives submit to your husbands, um, like a husband submit to the church, and worse, and basically it also says that uh, <clears throat> that husbands are also supposed to treat the woman like they treat the church. In other words, very well. And the church basically is a group of people. Uh, group of people. Um, I found uh the church is not a building; is a group of people. First Peter three seven men love your wives uh, honor honor her numbers five thirty one through uh, eleven through thirty one it's about adultery 
Proverbs 21, 19, better to live in a desert than, uh, than with a contentious and vexing woman. So yeah, if you, if you have a, a woman or you if you're dating someone and they're, they're doing nothing but vexing you and causing you issue, um, you need to get the heck out of there. Um, you need someone that is going to, um, love you and treat you right. Not someone that's going to use you and manipulate you, uh, which I've seen a lot in my life. Um, and I work in a facility that I actually see students using and abusing each other when they have these so-called relationships. And I see these student girls, um, they keep jumping from one guy to the next. Um, and that's not a, a proper relationship. Um, and you're not supposed to divorce your wife unless, uh, for, um, I think the only reason why was adultery. Um, but I can understand if you're being abused and that type of uh, a thing. Um, like if you're being abused and raped and all that stuff, um, you need to get the heck out of there um, and find a, a safe place and an abode where you can go. So, um, so yeah. Um, so these are about all the wife scriptures. Um, but, um, but yes, God is about to bring his bride home. Um, so, um, um, he wants us to live righteous lives. And if you're living with a divorced woman, um, it says in the Bible that, um, if a woman gets divorced and you, uh, basically get remarried, you're in a divorce, um, and, uh, you're causing adultery, both you and her, and God wants you to leave. Um, he does not want you to be with a, uh, a divorced woman. So, uh, thank you for joining me, um, and have a great night.